Well, welcome back to COVID Conversations, where we have candid conversations during a pandemic. And uh, But in light of that, I'm excited about today because I have uh, with me an amazing family that I love deeply. I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you. Uh, so we're just going to start with the one that is the most excited about this video. <laughs> Allie. I'm Allie. <laughs> uh, I'm Jason Lester. I'm April. Bailey. Lindsay. Tyler. I'm really excited because in a few months, y'all are getting married. Yeah, so three months. It's amazing. Months. Uh -huh. It's awesome. Yeah. Stealing one of the Lester's. Yeah. Converting into Woo. an Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> it's no great. returns for exchanges. Final. Yeah. Final, final. sale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, uh, real quick, just before we get into the meeting question, one of the things we like to talk about on this uh, conversation is just what's been the, the best and the worst part of this quarantine season. So whoever wants to jump in, I know, I know, Allie, you're eager to talk, so yeah. if you want to, you can lead us off. That's right. Um, well, actually, the best part has probably been um, just getting to, like, chill out, finally. Because I know I was at a point in the school year where it was just, like, like running 90 and nothing every day, and then... Now I just get to like chill out, which it's getting kind of boring at this point, but I mean, it's whatever, so. Um, worst part? I have a few. Um, <laughs> probably, Shocker. Um, I don't know, I just really miss my friends, obviously, like that's basic, but mm -hmm. I miss my friends and I miss my school year, honestly. That was really tough to lose that, yeah. so, yeah. And tennis on the back end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tennis yeah. was tough too. So. Yeah, I'd probably say like the same stuff pretty much. Just like leaving school and then leaving my friends and like leaving my normal schedule. But then also like I'm able to spend time with everyone and like especially Lindsay like and Tyler. I don't ever get to see them. Like this is the first time in months that I know we've been home for. I mean, we've been bouncing back and forth between here and Tyler's parents. Yeah. But I mean, this is probably yeah. the most time we've been at home in a long time because yeah. mm -hmm. we live in Atlanta full-time so big city <laughs> get me out <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I agree. and best of course I mean it's great having the girls all here because it doesn't happen much anymore you know we're, we're at several stages and I thought that's why I was asking you I was making sure this was the third one I thought you know the first one was you guys with really small kids you know mm -hmm. the oldest kid between you you know the three of you that sat there that day was probably four mm -hmm. um, and then your next one you know I thought it was interesting they were pre-k to middle school so very different perspective there. You know, there's you guys that are kind of at home and you're there with toddlers, but a toddler's life isn't really different from day to day. The fact this hadn't affected them, you know. And then in the in the middle aspect there, the, the big thing was, you know, the school from home thing. You know, yeah. when you're from a, like they said, you know, pre-K up to middle school, you carry a lot of responsibility there, making sure they're staying on task and getting everything done. We're the next step. You know, we're sitting here with a kid, a high school, a college, and one that's already graduated and working. And so um, I think, you know, our perspective, it's like you're, so the grandparents are next, right? Is that where you're headed next? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had no idea I did this, yeah, but yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so, you know, of, of course, having them all here is great, but I think for me, it's like, it's being the emotional support for these, who's, you know, a, a junior who's loving her time at school and that time suddenly be, being taken away, you right. know, and, and seeing, I mean, it, and she's not a senior, so I really feel for those who are seniors, you know, but yeah. for, for a junior who is loving her year and loving her tennis season and loving her teachers and that just disappearing it's you know time I mean her time in high school is sand in an hourglass and it's disappearing slow yeah. you know quickly now and then for Bailey very much the same thing had finally made it through college through all the core stuff and now is into the stuff she loves yeah and then it's being taken from class again you know and then being taken away from her friends so I think the emotional piece that you try to provide yeah and then the perspective of a kid who's you know she's working from home and so I think that's not really upsetting to her but a June wedding planned, right. that's then all of a sudden postponed and the, the emotion mm -hmm. and the decisions and the what ifs that go with that and the uncertainty. And so, so for me, that's the hard part yeah. is that, you know, so. if it's toddler kids, not a lot of emotional support do they need. They just need to be no. fed and just played mom and with. I mean, they're, they're whatever. Mom and dad are the ones there, I think. Yeah. But, <laughs> and in the second case, I think, you know, the emotional piece is more um, yeah. the support you're having to provide hands on to the kids. I'm not touching. I don't have to worry about school from home and. I mean, that doesn't bother me, but for me, it's affected yeah. my adult children yeah. in a very different way. And so that you just want to support them through that and seeing them not suffer through that, it's the wrong word, but just seeing them yeah. go through this season. Adapt to it. Yeah. It's tough. 
I mean, COVID conversation, you just never know what's going to happen in the background. But you look good, Wesley. Just so you know, at home, we have an amazing videographer, Wesley Herndon. Shout out to Wesley. He looks like straight Hollywood right I mean, he looks like a director, too. He looks just like a director. That's right. Every once in a while, put a button on and not my sweatpants. He's awesome. Jason, you got anything? You'd... Yeah, you know, I think the family thing has been has been really neat. I mean, I, I've just said with ministry and, and our coaching, we, we minister to coaching athletes, and so I think the one thing that we've really noticed in the past years, we, we're we're running at a pace that's that's not it was not healthy. It right. was a very unhealthy pace yeah. in ministry. Mm -hmm. I think it parallels with with coaches too, and and so I was just worried about where that was going yeah we were we were going to have coaches probably end up uh, you know losing their families and, and, and if, if they stayed in that in that same pace and i think in ministry too but so god god kind of called a time out and so yeah. for us it's been a neat time to reflect on uh, on what god's really trying to say uh, and so you know you know there's there's i'll just there's three things that i think god's kind of kind of taught me in this and i've shared this with them a little bit too Number one, we, we use that term uncertainty a lot. You know, this is, these are uncertain times. And yeah. I just, God's kind of convicted me every day is uncertain yeah. to me. And, and how flippant have I been in my ministry and my life to wake up in day on days and think, I got this today. Mm -hmm. Brandon needs you a lot more today. How about, how about going and taking care of Brandon? I, I got it, God. Don't, don't mm. worry about me today. And he's kind of showed me that in this, listen, every day to me is uncertain, but no day to him is uncertain. Okay. And so I, I want to be able to, when we get back to normal, and I don't want to get back to normal, when we get back to normal, I want that piece of what God said to me to remain. That I want to approach every day in the fact that God's in control and I'm yeah, not. And whatever good. happens today, you know, he's got it. I think, number two, I want to be able to... Um, Learn if we don't come out of this thing, and, and we're not different. If we're not right. better because of what God's taught us, then man, we have wasted one of the greatest timeouts in, in, in our lifetime, obviously. And so I think I, I want God to teach me, and I want to learn, and then be different when we get back to normal. Again, I, I don't want us to get back to normal. I want some normalcy, but I want to be I want to be different. Yeah. Uh, Tony Bennett he was the head basketball coach at, at University of Virginia. Of course, they're still still reigning champs now because we, we didn't have a March Madness. But, um, right. you know, they got beat. They, they were a number one seed that got beat by a 16 seed the year before, before they won the national championship. He, he made the comment that, that if, if you use adversity right, mm. it, will, it will punch you a ticket to a place that you never could have gotten to before. And I just think our families, we're learning a lot about our families, about our family time, how we value that that this adversity, the only way we were going to really learn that was through what, what we're going through. Yeah, and so, again, I, I don't want to go back to normal. I want those things to, to remain. And then last, I, I would challenge everybody, and I've challenged our staff with this and our, our coaches too, write down right now what's, what's important right now. Well, what do you value right now? Because I'm telling you, whatever it is we value now, Six months from now, if we do get back to normal, this is still what's important. Yeah. And right now, if you talk to staff and coaches, they're going to tell you our families. We've got coaches that are getting more time with their families. They've never had this much time with their families in 20, 25 years, depending yeah. on how long they've been coaching. And, and you know, staff and everybody. So we, we understand our families are very important. We're, we're figuring out church is very, very important. It's yeah. a very important place to, to be able to go. But also through the virtual thing, I've enjoyed our time at home, you know, turning the TV on and, and us having our own little special time of, of, of worship too. So my family's important, my church is important, um, our physical fitness. I mean, we, we, we've walked a thousand miles out here, which I'm sure everybody else has too. Awesome. So all these things though now, that I've, if I, everything else that's been stripped away, if I write down what's important now, that's still gonna be important six months from now. Yeah. So write it down. And then keep it in a place where you can see that when we get back to, to normal that we don't, because that, that's my fear now. My, my anxiety now with my, our family and with our coaches and our staff is when we get back to normal, is it going to be a, a flood of when things do open up and then we're just going to go right back to, to the rat race? Because if that's the case, then, yeah. then we're going to be in more trouble then than, than we were kind of going in. So. 
That's a long answer <laughs> to a very <laughs> short question. You said three <clears throat> points, but I think there were four. No, nah, the, the, the fourth point <laughs> oh, okay. that, I've, that I've talked about before is just a one-word thing. And I think God, my one word for the year has been content. It, in January, it was content. And then here we go into this season. And so I think that Philippians 4, you know, where Paul said, I've learned to be content in no matter what, whether I've got a little, whether I've got a lot. And I think in this season, a lot's been taken away. But you know what? I'm content because now I'm content in what really matters. And what really matters most is my relationship with Christ. That, that's my foundation. And so I can do all these things, he says, through, through Christ. I can, I can make it when I've got a little. I can make it through Christ. But I think also I can make it when I've got a lot. And sometimes yeah. I'm worse when I have a lot, when I'm blessed than, than the rest. That's so, good. Yeah, thank you for the... <laughs> but we're, we're, we're almost bad. We're not Baptists, but we come from... So, it's only three points. Yeah, yeah. You can't have four. That's the Baptist hostel in this that just tacked yeah. on what the Spirit just, led you to say. You just yeah. blew that. It's yeah, just you, my job to keep yeah. him yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. You blew it up. Um, and it really is. It, uh, we say it's uncertain. What I love that you said is that God is not uncertain. That He knows. He saw this. Yeah. He, he's planned for this. He, he has a purpose in this. And um, even with uh, just the heartbreak of like a school year coming to an end or a wedding getting pushed, um, like that's devastating. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that what you're saying is like God's teaching. Yeah. And we can waste this moment and not learn from it. Or we can use it to better ourselves and to grow in our relationship with God. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I really wanted to chat with you about. Is that Jesus calling? Yeah, it's calling. Drake one. He's got a fifth point. Oh, yeah, that's um, right. So... Uh, one, one thing I would love to give to our people is what is something practical? Because I love that. Write something down. Mm -hmm. But like we can, uh, because depression, anxiety, worry is on the rise because people are being cooped in their house. Mm -hmm. uh, families are getting sick of each other. Um, uh, Allie? Allie? Maybe. Yes. Allie? You. Do you? Yeah. 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 Allie did this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just true. There Amen. Fighting, yeah. <laughs> Bailey's just hanging middle, out. Yeah, I love it. Um, Tyler smartly sit over there saying, not, <laughs> not a word. word. <laughs> yeah. He's Tyler watching and observing. Yeah. Yeah. Better than anything on cable. Yeah. 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 Who needs TV yeah. when you got the yeah. Lesters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what is something practical? Like, how do you remain uh, in the joy of the Lord? Like, how do you keep the joy when the world, when everyone else is, like, saying we should be panicking? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I love Jason's answer. Four points. Maybe a poem yeah. at the end. I love it. Um, he went sermon right there. He said, I'm yeah. going to answer this. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. <laughs> but girls, do y'all have anything that, or Tyler, you got anything that you would like to, some practical things that y'all are doing currently to remain, uh, to keep a joy when the world is saying you shouldn't? I feel like that's something we've talked about a good bit. Um, and I saw somebody post this, I don't remember who it was, but just talking about like with our wedding getting moved. Mm. Um, we've had a couple of friends that are going through the same thing, so that's been really nice to have people kind of walk through this season with that no one really knows yeah. what to do because no one's really had to do this, you know? Um, and they said something along the lines of, you know, if what I had planned, because wedding is one of those things in your life that you like plan for a year and it's supposed to go off exactly how you planned it. Yeah. And that's just like how it's supposed to be. So their post was talking about, you know, if whatever plan I had designed for all of this, if God didn't want that to happen, then obviously he has something so much greater yeah. plan. It'll bring him like so much more glory than whatever I had decided I thought was good enough for that day, yeah. you know? Um, so I think that that's something that I've just been able to kind of trust in during this whole season is, you know, if the wedding we had planned and the location and the all of that wasn't good enough for what he wanted, then what eventually will happen will be exactly what he yeah, wanted to happen in the first place. So I feel like that's been something I've kind of hung on to. I don't know if there's something else that you... Well, I mean, I think something that I've always just, in, not enjoyed, but been intrigued by the idea of like joy and suffering mm -hmm. and like the kind of juxtaposition of those two words, because yeah. they shouldn't go together, but they often do in the Bible, I mean. Um, like it talks about how like we're honoring the Lord when we go through suffering sometimes. Yeah. And so it almost like from not necessarily a prideful place, but it's kind of like 
competitively gets me excited about being a Christian sometimes to go through suffering. Yeah. Like it sucks. Don't get me wrong. I'm not over here like, yeah, I get to suffer. But at yeah. the end of the day, like you're able to sit down and be like, all right, how's the Lord testing me? What it's do good. I need to figure out? Because I think that's where you, you dig in. Like Jason was saying that it's a little harder to be close to God in the good times. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I think this this time of, of suffering makes you dig a little deeper in mm. time of anxiety. You're like, all right, I got to figure something out. That's and, good. and so I think that's been interesting to see with us i mean we go back to we've had a hard we talked about we've had a hard couple three years or something like that where something just one little thing pops up and kind of takes over for half the year and it's kind of hard um but i just think of like job and the suffering and like mm-hmm. I, and those some people struggle with that story and kind of how god would let that happen but to me it's almost honoring that, that god would say like no you can handle it yeah. you know like there is suffering to be had but i think you like god's looking at us saying like i think you can find the joy yeah like i know you're my creation you can find the joy and and when i throw life at you because yeah this year it's a pandemic but i mean there's so many other things like you can't like sure. we we have tried to fall in the trap and not playing the comparison game with the wedding yeah you know, and being we like talk about that a lot. we talk about that a lot is like we've been blessed in so many other ways that it's easy to look at this one season and be like, all right, this was the one day we had planned. Of course it happens right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we've had countless other blessings and who's to say in the future, there are other things that our friends are struggling with right. that we don't really have to deal with. Yeah. Um, and but so then get, at the same time with that, I think we've also talked about like giving yourself a lot of grace through all yeah. of this. That oh, yeah. You good. can't play the game of comparison in terms of like, Oh, well at least, I mean, yes, of course, at least I don't have a family member that's sick or at least I don't have like, somebody I know that's passed away from all of this or anything. But at the same time, I think you have to give yourself grace and kind of process through that emotion of, okay, yeah. I'm, it is kind of like a suffering, you know, it's, it's kind of a intense word to use, I feel like, but at the same time we have to be, I don't know, like honest with ourselves of, okay, this is how I feel about it. And let's like process that. Mm-hmm. And then let's move on after that, you know? So just giving yourself a lot of grace of not playing this comparison game that, oh, well, they're worse than me. So I don't get, like, I don't get to feel bad, then, yeah. or I don't get to struggle because, well, at least I'm not going through this. But right. I think that can be just as not unhealthy, but I guess, yeah, that can be just as unhealthy as just wallowing in pity all the time, you know, yeah. and, like, feeling sorry for yourself. So it's good. didn't mean to interrupt you. But. No, no, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's good. I mean, I think there's a John Piper quote that I'm probably going to butcher to some extent, but... <laughs> Brandon will set you straight. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like cry about it, grieve, cry, and then wash your face, get up, and then walk out the life the Lord has for you. Yeah, that's good. And I think that's something that we have to remind ourselves of sometimes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like when the wedding got moved, like I think I kind of tried to just kind of be joyful for a little bit, you know, like acknowledge, all right, suffer, be joyful, kind of go through it. But it really took a day, I would say, of grieving, you know, yeah. where mm-hmm. I was just in a bad mood and cried about it and all this stuff. But then you're able to wash your face, get up, and be like, all right, God, what do you have in store now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? So I think there's there's a time to acknowledge and process the suffering, and then there's a time where, you know, you owe it to yourself and, and to trust in God and kind That's of good. walk out what you have in the future. That's great. That's a good word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think just, like, asking God for help and, like, mm-hmm. knowing that you're not alone and he doesn't want you to be alone in what you're, like, feeling, even if you don't understand, like, what's going on. Because, like, I mean, this is a weird time, like, not even like y'all's generation or like my parents like have been through a pandemic or even like their parents like I don't even know but like Mm -hmm. no one not many people that are alive today have been through a pandemic and so like no one really understands what's going on like what they're thinking what they're feeling a lot of times too but Mm -hmm. just like going back to the verse of I mean I don't know exactly where it's at but um of like don't worry about anything but like through prayer and thanksgiving like make your request known to God like Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to just like leave you where you are and you can ask him for help and um like especially when you don't understand like just going to him and being like this is what i'm feeling and i need your help on it and then you can you can um expect him to move and expect him to do something so just being able to hold on to that that it's not like you're not just sitting here alone in this like obviously that's a lot of the gospels that you're not alone in what you're feeling so that's great so good yeah i think a lot of it um for me is definitely just like thinking about how you're not the only one going through this. Like literally 
everybody else in the country is going through the exact same thing as you, like being stuck at home or like losing certain things over this. And I think it's also a good reminder, like there's hope, like this is one day going to end, like whether it's like in a few like weeks or months or years or whenever we finally get to heaven, like it's finally going to end one day. Um, yeah, and I think it's encouraging just like holding on to the people that like you know are always going to be there. It's good. Um, yeah, just definitely like grasping to them and just like remaining like in the word because I have a few, f uh, sorry, I have a few <laughs> friends that like we read through, um, first we read through Romans and then we read through Job like a few weeks ago, which was just really Just some light fitting. reading. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, it yeah. was really dark, really rough. <laughs> Netflix, Joe. <Jen. laughs> <Netflix, Jen. laughs> <Jen. laughs> it was really, it was rough a few, there were a few days where it was really rough to read through it. Um, yeah just really dark at some points, but that's, I mean, that's exactly how we've all been feeling. Like, it feels dark some days, and it feels, um, like, hopeless, like there's never going to be an end to it, but, like, when it gets mm -hmm. down to it, like, there is going to be an end to it one day, like, whether it's, like, soon yeah. or later, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Just going off that hope thing, I remember I saw somebody talking about, you know, like, everyone else in the world, their hope is, like, when this ends or when mm -hmm. the pandemic ends, and it's so unknown. But we as Christians kind of have that opportunity that that's not what our hope yeah. is in and not what our hope has ever been in. Yeah. Um, and so I think this whole thing has just been such a great example of kind of what you put your hope in and just showing us that like tangibly of what a difference it is. Just the things that we get to place our hope in and how different that is yeah. from everybody else. And you can see already, I feel like Christians are just handling this completely differently. And I think the world is seeing that, yeah. you know. Um, Good. So just going off that hope thing. I feel like that's just been a big key yeah. in all of this. It's amazing. It's cool just to think too about that idea of hope because in scripture when it talks about hope, it's the guarantee. And like to, even the scripture where it talks about we don't grieve as those without hope. Like we we know. And, uh, and I think in this season, what I'm constantly hearing is uh, we're having moments where we are doubting or where we lose our focus, but God has removed so much from our lives that it's making us focus on Him. Yeah. You, you can either run from Him or run to Him in this season, and, uh, and He's removed so many distractions uh, so we can see Him. And, uh, and I love that. Like I'm broken. I, my heart broke for the seniors, for all the students that just got ripped out of school. My heart broke when I heard about your wedding, because I know that day is awesome and amazing, and you don't want to push it. Uh, and, and you're tired, probably tired of planning. We planned it in 10 weeks and I was over it. And so, um, but to know that God is, has not left you in your mm -hmm. sorrow and he yeah. hasn't left you to just wallow around. Uh, another Piper quote that comes to mind is like, when you feel like you can't take it anymore, look to Jesus and take it some more. Mm -hmm. And like, and that's what I'm having to remind myself. Like oh, yeah. he, he is, prov he is allowing suffering to remove the sinfulness of us. So we'll see him greater mm -hmm. and we'll be filled with him. That's right. So I must decrease it, he'll increase. And so it's, what I love about, like that's what God's showing all of us that are pressing into him. Yep. And the church is yep. not, maybe not being able to gather, but it's bigger than it's ever yeah, been. Yeah, you're right. And so, any, any closing remarks you might have? Dad always has one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made all my points. I've done a good job. I mean, I know it's a canned saying too, but you know, like talking about Christians in this time, um, and you know, the. For some people, um, you know, you may be the only Bible somebody yeah. ever reads. I mean, they may not pick up a Bible, but they're going to watch your life. And if you profess to be a Christian, um, they're watching to see how you handle. And, and, and I, um, I just have always said, too, that, you know, as a Christian, my responsibility, I may not be great at out just evangelizing and, you know, preaching and, and, and those kind of things, but I can live my life in a way that I hope the only way it can be explained is through yeah. His presence in me. That's good. And so, um, Strong. you know, just that I may not do everything right, but, I, you know, I just hope to be the kind of person that that people don't doubt it. Yeah, you know? it's awesome. Yeah. And, you, and, and through that comes joy and peace and yeah. encouragement to others during, you know, or whatever. So. Joy comes in the morning. 
Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So it's good. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my joy's not in the mornings. It's After lunch. Yeah. 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 April's yeah. is like 10:30 at night, at night yeah. when she starts to work on the ship lab. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. like, I could probably start right now. Crazy. We're going to bed, man. All this home project. I, love yeah. it. I think the best part of all this has definitely been having mom cook every day. Yeah. 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 Super jealous. Of they think it's that. the best. I think it's the worst. But you know. I would probably be eating cereal for dinner every night if we were still in Atlanta. Yeah. So that's been great. We're yeah, trying to well. We're eating frozen pizza and, yeah. and not exercising, so I'm going to start working. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've gained some weight. I'm sorry, viewers. Billy <laughs> Ramsey yesterday asked me if I gained 45 pounds. Oh, my goodness. 45 camera, pounds. The camera oh. adds 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, so really just ask if you gained 30. 30. 30. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is still ridiculous. Still but, um, <laughs> well, I appreciate uh, all the words of wisdom and y'all just being willing to be honest and share what God's teaching you in the season. So give yourself grace because God is showing you and molding you into his image and, uh, and he wants to use this season. He doesn't want to waste it. He's, he's provided it and allowing it so we, can, so we can be molded into who he wants us to be. So we love you. We thank you for tuning in and we can't wait to, uh, to just be with you soon. So love you.